a fair number of announcements today. Um, so first up, uh, as I keep reiterating, uh, the checkpoints and the final uh, version of the project are due very soon. Uh, in case you were unaware, and to add to your uh, stress level, I apologize. Um, as of yesterday, it's four weeks to the last day of classes, which I was kind of like, um, what? When did that happen? Uh, so it's very, very soon. Um, the course assistant, so uh, as you may or may not know, uh, you don't all, often see them that much, but you may have gone to their office hours. Uh, we have two course assistants for this class, um, and uh, the option to do it uh, is basically available once you've taken this class. So if you're interested, that's the QR code to the form to uh, sign up. Um, and it is a paid uh, job. Uh, and it's, I want to say it's like five hours a week is the expectation. Uh, so it's a relatively light lift. Um, and you can do more data science -y stuff. It, there's nothing like learning something by teaching it. It makes it much it really does help you understand something better, uh, as I have discovered teaching this class, um, for example, and many other things that I've taught over the years. Uh, so those are a couple things. Um, you, uh, because it's the, the spring semester, you basically have until the end of the semester to kind of sign up, and then we'll kind of figure it out over the summer. Uh, so, you know, so don't worry too much about the pressure on it. Um, if you want any more details, also feel free to write to me or write to Bella or Ben uh, and ask them about it. Um, I have to cancel my office hours again tomorrow. Uh, I need to take a note that I should not try to have office hours on Fridays, apparently. Um, so if, however, you do need time with me, uh, please shoot me an email or you know post a Piazza note and I'll schedule something individually. Um, but yeah, tomorrow for me is kind of a train wreck um so that should be a lot of fun uh however there is a talk you might be interested in tomorrow uh which is a talk on data visualization by a former member of the aclu in massachusetts um and it should be accessible to all of you i think um that's kind of my expectation um but you know, you never know till the lecturer actually starts speaking exactly what level they'll be at. So, uh, but that's my hope. So hopefully that would be there. Uh, it will count if you want to use it for that extra credit uh, that we talked about in the past. Um, so that would count as one of the talks. Uh, I posted information about both the office hours and that talk in Piazza earlier today. So you can look for it there. Questions? Yeah. No, I think this this week's homework, there's no homework, right? Grant? No homework, no assign, the homework's not gonna be assigned next week. Yeah, so there's no homework due on Tuesday, just the project, or right, well, checkpoint. Okay, any other questions? Asking me anything ever about a calendar that is not directly in front of me is basically worthless, uh, just FYI. All right, uh, in good news today, um, especially if you're an American, uh, and I have a hard time saying her first name, but Ketanji uh, Brown Jackson uh, was nominated to the Supreme Court, uh, like she passed all the tests. And so she is now officially a Supreme Court Justice, first uh, black woman as a Supreme Court Justice. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. So I'm telling you because I'm excited about it. All right, moving on. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about confidence intervals from like kind of a different perspective uh, today uh, to hopefully make it a little clearer. Uh, so here we have a, thank you, a ruler. Uh, I have no idea what those units of measure are, uh, but basically I picked this particular piece of amazing clip art uh, because it actually has pretty big gaps. Uh, so originally I was doing it with like a millimeter ruler and it wasn't working out well. Uh, so. And now here we have, anybody know what this is? It's a Funko, Dumbledore. It's not me, all right? You, I know it looks like me, but it's not. This is a, a guy from a movie, um, but also some books. However, there's no pictures in the books, so. Um, so yeah, so let's say we wanna know how tall he is. Okay, well, we hold up the ruler to him. Uh, this is actually in my office, if anybody wants to see the line of them I have. Um, 
So what you notice though, is that it doesn't quite line up, right? So, you know, you kind of look at it and I don't know, maybe that's 7.7 .7 there, right? So, but we're not, we're not sure because we don't actually have any data in between these two lines, right? So our confidence interval is here, okay? So basically it's kind of the two things we know around it. So we're a hundred percent confident, right? That it's between seven and a half and eight. And we're kind of, we kind of think it's 7.7, .7, right? So that's what a confidence interval is explained from a quite a different perspective. Does that make sense? All right. And I got to put a Funko uh, in the slides. So that also is a win. Um, oh, sorry, I had one more slide with the big green arrow to make it really obvious what we were talking about. All right, so why do we care so much about confidence intervals? Because we can use them for testing. So what if we want to do a hypothesis test, but we can't simulate under the null? So the, you know, the population average of blah, um, alternative hypothesis, et cetera, um, but the cutoff for p-value is blah. Um, so what we can do, is we can kind of start to figure out a confidence interval for the population average. And then if X is not in the interval, then we can reject the null. And if X is in the interval, then we can't reject the null. Right? So we're just kind of tying back some of those pieces together. And so we start to think about what uh, some terminology called center and spread. And this is kind of what we'll be talking about is like, how can we quantify natural concepts like center, right? So things that are in the middle, right? And variability. So like the way things fluctuate, uh, why do many of the empirical distributions that we generate come out bell-shaped, right? So like a bell um, and how is sample size related to the accuracy of an estimate? Um, so some of these we've talked about a little bit already and here we're going to talk about them some more. But to start off with, we're gonna talk about averages, okay? And I think, you know, most of you know a little bit about averages, right? Um, and sorry, I'm just, I can't remember if the demo was supposed to be before at the end of the slide or the beginning of the slide. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do the demo first and then we'll talk about the, the details of the slide. So here we have a notebook. I managed to remember to put uh, today's lecture in the appropriate place. Uh, I also did an update of all the, like a bunch of the past lectures to make sure they were current as well. Just FYI, now I just have to find my cheat sheet. And off we go. I do wanna just kind of point out this note that I'm using SciPy in this, um, lecture, uh, but we don't normally use it in this class. I'm just using it for one quick demo because we have a little bit of a demo about confidence intervals. So we saw this a little bit already last time, right? So this was our confidence interval um, and you know, kind of here's the whole thing. Um, and then we, we are cheating here in the sense that we actually know the population value there and so we know that it's, it's kind of fallen in there. Um, but obviously when we're doing this most of the time, we, we don't know what the actual value is. That's why we're doing all this mess uh, to begin with, right? So I wanted to show another example. Did I like forget to clear all the, uh... let's do that. And then hopefully this doesn't take very long. Um, but I wanted to show kind of another, uh, this doesn't fit very well, does it? Oh, wait, maybe I can do this. That's a little better. Um, doesn't fit terribly well, but this is kind of another, I think a more obvious example of the thing I was showing last time where our confidence interval, right? is like, it's trying to keep it in there where, because we want this blue line, this kind of light blue dotted line. That's where we think the right answers are, right? But then every time we pull a sample that doesn't hit that line, that's throwing off our confidence, right? Because that's, that's what it means when it doesn't hit that line is that the average there wasn't in that sample set. 
right? So when we visualize it like this, I just think it's a little simpler uh, to think about it. Normally what we're actually doing when we do it with like, uh, you know, in Python or whatever, we're actually crashing all those together, right? We're actually just getting one answer out of it. Uh, but from a visualization perspective, it's kind of nice, I think, to look at it from, to kind of see them all individually separated, even though what your, your actual outcome is, is the whole thing flattened. And we're not really going to go to the slides. I think I was supposed to go to the slides first. But so now we're actually going to talk about averages. Um, and so we're going to first just create an array that's pretty simple. And can somebody tell me how to calculate the average of those elements the hard way? Right, right, exactly. So, so sum values, and then we divide it by the length of the values. Um, and length here, right, is a euphemism for the number of elements, right? So we basically, we add them all up and then we divide them by the number of things we have. And we end up with a 4.25. And then we have easier ways, which I think some of you have seen already, um, but we can say NP average, and that will give us the average. And then I think I say this on the slides, but I'm gonna say it now too. Um, we have another option, which is mean. And so, um, in mathematics, these two terms are generally synonymous. In uh, NumPy, the mean function lets you to do one other thing, which is give weights to the individual values. So you can kind of say, you can kind of skew the average, right, based on giving the individual pieces weights. We're not going to use that in this class, so you can use them basically interchangeably, whichever one you like better. Um, I, as you might guess, would probably choose mean because it's less characters. But I did want to show there's a, you know, it's one of those things where it's a distinction without a difference, in a sense. Um, and then uh, kind of I should have written this one out, but um, so I'm just going to skip that because it doesn't, it doesn't show what I wanted to show. So we're going to take this other table of the values and let's say we have a table of things that we want to get the average of. How do we, how do we get the average of this column? Any other ideas? Anybody else? All right. How about you back there? Uh, so sort of, there's an easier one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm gonna use mean because it's shorter. Um, so you, you could probably figure out a way to do it with apply. Um, it's just that we have something built in that does it easily, right? So, um, so we would say values table dot column. And then what do we call it value? And we end up with, you know, because we plugged it in with the same numbers, right? It's the same average. Uh, so it's just keep in mind, right, that whenever you mess or, you know, if you extract the column, it's just an array. So you can kind of do normal array operations on it. Um, so that's our little intro to averages. And let me switch it back to the slides. I have to switch them in both places. Why is that? <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, okay, so Top Hat decided to, on a build slide, put the initial version in black. That's kind of pointless. All right, so the average of the mean, right, is we just uh, take our data, then we add it together, divide it by the number of elements. But the key being, right, is that unlike the percentile, it doesn't need to be a value in the set. Uh, and it, to be honest, right, I, I would say it's almost like rarely a value in the set. Um, 
It also need not be an integer, even if the values are integers. Um, and then it'll be somewhere between the min and the max, but it may not be halfway in between. Um, and it's the same units as the data. And it, it, it operates as this concept called a smoothing operator. So it's a way of like trying to smooth out our data so that it's easier to work with. Um, so can anybody give me an example when or why um, you know the it won't be halfway? Um, and what comes to mind is that employee data set that we looked at a lecture three ago. Uh, any other ideas? Do you have your hand up? Yeah, how about you? Right, right on. Uh, so the, you know, the example we had, the one cop that was making 300 something thousand dollars a year, um, you know, that's gonna throw off your average a lot when most of the employees were I think making, I don't know, it was, I wanna say it was between like 40 and $80,000. Um, so that one big outlier. Now, just a, a caveat to what you said, right? Is that if you have outliers on both sides, it may still end up more in the middle, right? But if you have, you know, more on one side than the other, uh, that's when you'll see it. And the reason I mention that is because it is something that'll come up later when we talk about uh, outliers more specifically. Okay, so um, a smoothing operator, I would say, is uh, like kind of an important term. But the reason I don't really call it out is because I think it's more slangy than it is real, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, but it's a useful kind of thing to think about is that's why we want to do some of these things because the data is vast, right? And so if we can kind of simple, the more we can simplify the data without losing the quality of it, the more, uh, the, the simpler it is to make, uh, do analysis on it. All right. Um, so another broken build slide, that'll just be my thing for the day. Are we actually going to? Okay, so, um, and then you just kind of have two options, right? Uh, we can use the mean or the average. And as I say here, oh, did I get it backwards? Oh, I, I can't remember which way I said it. Uh, yeah, so it's average that lets you use weights, my bad, and mean, which will only give you um, the actual mean. Um, the, uh, the more formal term is mean, and that's probably why it errors that way. <clears throat> but I didn't build it, so. I can't say for sure. All right, so, so the median, as you'll recall, right, is the middle number in a set, um, and the mean is the average in a set. So given these two histograms, um, is the median bigger on the left picture or uh, bigger in the right picture? And did I forget to put the word bigger in the answers? I might have. Um, but so if it's left, then it's this one is bigger. And if it's right, that one's bigger. And if it's the same, obviously they're the same. All right, get those answers in. All right, last chance. Oh, I think we got everybody. All right. So it looks like the bulk of people got it right. Um, so the median on these two. Oh, it's not showing you the right answer. Why isn't it showing you the right answer? What? It normally shows you the right answer, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, we have had a feature upgrade that has uh, made everything more confusing. Um, so the, the correct answer is the same um, with those two. Uh, and uh, I apologize for Top Hat deciding to change things. All right, so same question, except this one is about the mean. So 
will these two graphs, and if you notice these graphs, even though they look pretty similar, are slightly different from the other graphs. Um, so are these two, the, you know, is the, is the left side bigger, the right side bigger, or are they the same? All right, last chance, get those answers in. All right, I'm gonna call it there. Yeah, I don't, I really don't understand why it's not showing you the answers. Um, but the correct answer was the right size bigger. Um, and can anybody tell me why it's the right size bigger? All right. right. So, so that's why I wanted to add a little caveat to that is that you said one, but it's, we have one pillar, right? And so we have some number of them, um, but it's, it's this much, right? So 10% of the overall thing ish or maybe maybe 12 um and so that is you know that this is tall enough right that it's skewing the, the average uh you know this direction that makes sense but we don't actually know exactly how many it is all right yeah, my slides are all broken today i'm very unhappy um yeah, sometimes we load them into top hat, they don't quite work. Um, all right, so I just wanted to give a little bit of a visual representation of how you do the calculation of a histogram So from a histogram. So if you want to know what the mean is, for example, from this histogram, um, and the colors are supposed to line up, but as you can see, it got a little bit skewed. But so the, the pink here, right, is the um, kind of where it is, right? And then the blue is the height. So you multiply the, the kind of the first number by the second number, and then you add that, multiply the first, you know, this by its height, then we get, you know, and add an item right until you get to the right edge. Um, and, you know, pretend that you can see the right edge of the graph, which is blank. Um, but then we add all those numbers together, we get 257, that's our total. Um, and then we take um, just the heights, and we get this 102, and that's how many items we have. So then we can do our simple average calculation, and that's how we can get to two and a half. Uh, so we can figure out exactly how big it is. That makes sense? And I'm very unhappy. You know how long it took me to get all those stupid things lined up? All right, oh, and this one's worse. All right, but so this is the same, same concept, except to do the median, okay? So what we do for that is we just add up all the heights, then divide that by two, and that gives us the median, okay? So this is the value of the median, but if you wanna know where in here it is, okay, you do kind of this calculation, which is add up columns until you go over this number, right? And then it's the one before that. So that's what our, my less than or equal there, you know, so 11 plus 23, that's still too far to the left, right? Because it hasn't reached it yet. Um, and then, but if you go one more over, you get 11, 23, and 33. And so, you know, it's, it's in that one because it adds up to be over. Does that make sense? Yes. Anyone? Anyone awake? All right. All right. So a little bit more on the meaning in the median. Um, and I sometimes feel like I'm, you know, uh, hitting that dead horse pretty hard with this, uh, but it's important to understand the difference. And I don't know about for y'all, but at least for me, it's always been a little bit of a confusing thing. So the mean is the balance point of the histogram and the median is the halfway point of the data. Um, and half the area of the histogram will be on either side of the median, okay? And these are important, right, because like most of the time, like kind of for the rest of the semester, 
we will be mostly looking at histograms. And so kind of being able to look at a histogram and understand what it's telling you quickly is a very useful ability, right? Um, and so if the distribution is symmetric, you know, so it looks like it's kind of around the center, then um, the average and the median will be the same. Um, but if it's skewed, it'll indicate that the median and the mean will be different. And basically the reason we, we talk about those two as well is because we're kind of, we compare them a lot in the sense that, uh, or we use them to do our estimations a lot. So choosing a mean versus a median comes down a lot of the time to whether or not it's skewed. All right, another question. What is the halfway point of data? I suppose halfway point of the data. All right, almost everybody get those answers in. All right. Oh, now it's decided to show you the answers. Oh, it must have been because I used images. That's what changed. And so maybe it's not showing it because I used images. Um, this is my favorite result when we do these. So everybody got it right? Well done. So now we're gonna talk about standard deviation. Um, and, oh, I thought I got all these. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so this one, we don't have a top hat style question for this one, um, uh, which I knew there were more and then I forgot. Um, so. Raise your right hand if you think the mean is bigger or your left hand if you think the median is bigger um, and raise both hands if you think they're the same in this histogram. All right, hands up, come on, let's see. Take a guess, what's the worst that can happen? You have to put your hand down. All right, so, if we actually do the calculation, we see one is 1986 and one is 1989, which means that, sorry, the mean is uh, smaller, right? So the median, so whoever had their left hand up was correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, tell me your question and I'll figure out if I can go back that far. Uh, talk to me after class then, and we'll, because that's, are you sure it's not a problem with the picture? Yeah, like I said, talk to me after class. It, it's hard to do in my head. All right. Um, but the median, it should be, it should be on half is on both sides. Right. Correct. Um, okay, so another one. Um, and so the same deal. So raise your right hand if you think the mean is bigger, raise your left hand if you think the median is bigger. And uh, if you think it's the same, raise both hands. It is? Did I? Oh, I thought I had gone, I thought I had gone forward and then recovered, okay. Uh, so we don't have any more of those. Um, okay, so defining variability, um, the obvious approach is to take the biggest value and subtract the smallest value, but that doesn't tell us much about the shape of the distribution, right? Um, so what we can do is measure the variability around the mean and figure out a way to quantify this. So in other words, like, like we, we don't always want to do the thing that we've been doing, which was a little simplistic, right? We just kind of did the subtraction. Um, instead, what we want to might want to know is like where, like how far or what what kind of impact the variability or variance is, and so with that we might want to use a different technique. 
And so that's what we're going to show now. Maybe. If I can get my windows correct. All right. So we have our brilliant table, okay, which just has, you know, our four values here. And, oops. So if we want to get our average, right, um, we just take the average of the table. And this is a little, I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's a little shortcut or shorthand. Um, and then we can just print our average, assuming I typed everything correctly. So this is just another way of getting to the column um, so that we don't have to type it all out. Uh, and then what we want to do is look at the, you know, kind of by way of example, look at the straight deviations and add it to our awesome table. Oops, I think it's values, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we see, right, um, how far away is the value from the mean? I was just looking at the math, it, it felt wrong for some reason. Um, okay, so, but what's, what's a, does anybody know a good way to test? Cause like I was looking at this 475, right? And I was like, that is that right? Um, so what would be a good way to test whether our calculation of the deviations is correct? Any ideas? Well, so that's doing the same thing again. I mean, a way to check that that was the, uh, that what we got was what we expected. All right, so we can add them up. And, oops. All right, and what should we get if we add it up, if it's correct? Zero. The old goose egg. Right, so, uh, so that's a, just kind of a way we can quickly check if we were doing things correctly. Um, and obviously in this very simple example, it's pretty likely we did it right. Um, but when you're putting like a bunch of columns together or something like that, it can be pretty easy to make mistakes. Okay, so I feel like, sorry, let me just see if I want to, yeah, okay, so. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to the slides because I think it's uh, easier to understand. And we'll come back to that a little bit more. Um, so I think it's a little easier to explain it in words first and then uh, show you the numbers. Uh, but so take the average, the mean of the thing that we're looking for, right? Um, and then determine the deviations of the data from the mean. But then we can square those deviations and then take the mean of the squares, which will tell us the variance, and then take the square root of the mean. And just as uh, slides are really failing me today. Um, let me just check and see what that was saying before. Eventually. Um, so Take the square root of that mean or the root mean square or RMS, okay, is what you'll see it as sometimes. And it's also known as the quadratic mean. But that gives us this standard deviation. So this is kind of like the process in short, right? Um, and the pieces that it gives you when you go through this activity. Um, and the thing, one of the useful mechanisms of why we're kind of going through 
in some ways, if you think about it, like uh, we're, we're not really changing very much, um, but it's so that we can get the uh, standard deviation as having the same units as the original data, okay? Um, because if we didn't do the squaring and the uh, square rooting, right, it'd be a different unit. So like the squaring helps us with the negatives and the uh, square rooting brings it back into the same units. Follow me? Okay. So by way of example, we'll finish the example we were looking at. And so, Anybody know what I should put here, given what I just went through? So we went and we did the subtraction. What was the next step? Correct. So deviations, and we square with two stars. And we're just going to attach that onto the table as well. So now we have the square deviation, right? So that helps us with the negatives. And then we want to get back to. Um, no, actually, before we do that, we want to talk about, okay, so what do we, we now want to see what the variance of the data is, which is the average, oops, oh, good gracious, is the average of um, the deviations, or the square deviation, sorry, SD table dot column. And what is that? Two. And so this is our variance, right? Is seven point you know seven ish uh, on this data, like how far away from the mean? Um, and then we can get to the standard deviation itself, which will be what exactly? Let me know what I do to get the standard deviation. Yeah, back there. Yeah. Right. So we raise the variance to 0 0.5, which is the square root. So that's, that's one standard deviation for this data set. Okay. And then now that we've kind of gone through all of the hard way to do it, we can also use the easy way, which is the standard deviation function on our original values and we get the same number. Um, but so this STD here stands for standard deviation. So that'll just calculate it for you. So you don't have to go do it yourself. So it says to go back to the slides, but let me see if I believe it. Oh yeah, I think so. And, nope. All right, so now we have a question. A variance is the mean of squares. Is that true or false? All right, last answers. I'm closing, moving on. And the correct answer is true. So this, this time we don't get how many people got the true answer, but whatever. Uh, Top Hat must be doing an upgrade. Um, all right, great is my comment on this, right? Well, what it's useful for is that no matter what the shape of the distribution is, the bulk of the data are in the range of the mean plus or minus a few of the standard deviations. Okay, so, and then this is the same 
thing I talked about in the bro broken down slide, but like as all one sentence, right? So um, this is, I find always confusing because you kind of, the operations start at the end and you go backwards, right? Through it to do the, to actually figure out the math. So if you compare this to my earlier slide, it's basically reverse. But this is how you say what a standard deviation is out loud. Make sense? If you wanted to explain it to somebody else and like extra confuse them. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that character, that just means plus or minus. Um, and it looks like that, but it's uh, also a fun one to try to create on a keyboard. All right, so then uh, what he says, I need to look up how exactly you're supposed to pronounce his name, um, but Ch Chebyshev's uh, inequality, I'm gonna slaughter, um, but uh, that's what we're gonna talk about next. All right, so how big are most of the values? Okay, so no matter what the shape of the distribution is, the bulk of the data are in the range of the mean plus or minus a few uh, standard deviations. Uh, Chebyshev's uh, inequality proves this, that no matter what the shape of the distribution, the proportion of values in the range, mean plus or minus, you know, Z, so sum, right? SDs is at least one minus one over Z squared. So that's kind of handy, right? Because now it tells us exactly what our distribution, like how big it is in a sense. Um, so it can be very useful and, when I say the word proves, that means mathematically proven, right? So it, it can't be wrong unless we change some of the mathematical tenets, which you can do it in an advanced course in non-Euclidean geometry if you want to, but that's not what we're doing here. All right. So in other words, um, Yeah, these slides are like busted. I apologize. Uh, oops. Okay. So I might have just given it away by showing the other slide, but. All right, so no matter what the shape of the distribution, blah, 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 uh, the mean plus or minus ZS uh, standard deviations is at least one minus one over Z squared. And for example, if you have a mean that is 10 and the standard deviation is three, then at least what number of the values are within four to 16? So do you think it's 89% or do you think it's 92%? And we're gonna raise right and left hands. Okay. So raise your right or left hand, whenever you're ready. And unless you wave your hand at me, I'm going to assume that you're raising it for this versus asking for it. All right, everybody, come on, make a guess. We're going to give it away in a second. All right, so the right-hand side is correct, okay? And here is a cheat sheet. Uh, that's why I was saying I wasn't sure I gave it away. Um, so if you're within two standard deviations, That'll be at least one and a quarter, or, or sorry, one to one four. No, whatever. To seventy five percent will be um, within that range, uh, and at least you know with the three standard deviations, four, etc. Um, and obviously, you get really, really close at ninety six percent. So no matter what the distribution looks like. So what does that mean, right? So it means on the prior example, as we get steps of three out okay we get more and more inside the distribution right so when we say it's within two standard deviations right we do one then two okay that range will be 75 percent of the data okay and then if we do the same we'll take another third step out okay of size in that case size three and that's how big it is yeah Like, 
Right. It's four to 16, though. Yeah. Yeah, this one, I probably should swap the three so that it doesn't, like, I don't, there's too much name collision. All right, uh, we can talk about after class. Um, but long story short, like I said, there's, there's this general cheat sheet, right? Um, yeah, I don't know why I can't say that today, but basically the you know, if, if you want to have 88% of your data, it's the, if you take the average and then do three standard deviations away from it on both sides, you'll have 88% of your data. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I was saying it's a little confusing. So it's 10, one standard deviation would be 10 plus or minus three. Oh, yeah, 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 right. So 10, 19 and one, yeah. All right. Um, so I think we have an example and I'm just missing the prompt. And so we're going to take our baby table again. Um, and, but we're going to drop the, um, the field about the maternal smoker. Cause what we're going to look at here is ages and baby weights. Um, I think it's, yeah, ages definitely. Um, yeah. So how do we get rid of a column in a table? Drop. And we just give, the table name, or uh, sorry, the column name. So we're just gonna get rid of this. All right. And then if we wanna make a histogram, so normally if I try to do a histogram and I can type, the default for a histogram is to overlay all the data. And you've seen us do this, right? When I had like the yellow and blue one kind of slightly shifted. Um, but what this is gonna do is show them all separated, okay? So in this way, we can kind of say, okay, I wanna see the histograms for basically all the numerical data in this table, okay? And that's part of the other reason we wanna get rid of the maternal smoker here is because it's the only thing that's not numerical. Um, but so we can now see, okay, the birth weights, right, are kind of centered around whatever that is, looks like 120-ish. Um, and then, but gestational days, so how long was the woman pregnant? Uh, looks like it's right around 275 maybe, 275 days. What was the age of the mothers, right? It seems like they're generally speaking uh, between like 22 and 27 maybe. Um, and then the height of the mothers, uh, looks like right around 65 inches. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, and then what's the pregnancy, the woman who was pregnant, what was her weight probably at the time of birth? So let's look at the pregnancy weight. And figure out what is the average? And remember, we're just pulling that column out so that we can operate on it as an array. Um, and then we can just easily get the standard deviation as well. And now we see that the average is 128, right? And the standard deviation is 20. So that means that going back here for a second, This would be faster if I didn't have to have so many windows open. Oops. So if the weight was, uh, I think I said 120, 
Um, and the standard deviation is, or no, 128, sorry. Standard deviation is 20. Then that means that 20 plus 20, okay, on both sides will be 75% of the population. So whatever, 128, 168, right? Down to uh, 88, right? Is approximately the range that you'll see 75% of these mothers uh, weights in. That makes sense? All right, and then But a much more common one is actually to use the uh, use three standard deviations, right, for a higher chunk. Um, and this goes back to using our kind of confidence intervals, right, is that um, we don't want 75%. We want something more like 88%. That's a lot better. Um, and so to calculate that, we can use this between function, as I'm sure you've all used already. But we can say the mean minus three times the standard deviation and the mean plus three, did I put a three? Yeah, uh, times the standard deviation. So that's gonna give us the value of the three standard deviations. Let me just print that because then it'll make, I think more sense. Just not seeing it. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's we're pulling out the table. Yeah. Sorry. I was thinking we were calculating the, the three standard deviations. But no, what we're doing is we're just pulling out of the table all the ones that are in, within three standard deviations. My mistake. So we can figure out the proportion within three standard deviations of the mean. And so we have within three SDs, and then we can say number of rows, right? So that's how many we have in our population or in this subset of the population. And that's how many we have in the overall population. And so, did I miss say that earlier? So that's 98% of the population, okay? So how is that different from the slide that I was talking about? So three standard deviations, what do we expect it to be? But this is the key, right? At least, okay? So you'll often have much more than that. Basically, it all comes down to those outliers, essentially. Um, but so at least when I, you know, when I look at this right now, you know, I immediately go, oh wait, that sounds wrong. But it's not, right? It's at least that much. All right, then. Oh, I'm sorry. And, uh, and the thing I just showed you uh, is what was my next line of code, which, you know, so same thing, but I showed it to you on the slide. Um, and then, I don't know why I printed the labels, but let's get a visual representation of the overall thing. So now we can calculate the mean here and calculate the standard deviation again, which I guess we have these float around in these values already probably. Um, but then are there any more? Oh yeah. So this is when I should have left the picture up and I think it would have been a lot clearer what we're trying to do here. Um, so I'm actually going to cut and paste this one. Okay. So we're gonna calculate, we're gonna pull out. So basically what we're doing, right, is we're going to kind of see what falls in each of the standard deviation amounts going from two, three, four, five, right? 
And so that's going to pull each of them out and show us the, the kind of result um, for each size. Um, and I think this will make a lot more sense once you see it. So one more calc and then we should have it. So in our particular data set, right? If you look at the birth weight component, we can calculate what the standard deviations are. Um, and we can see that in that particular data set, within two standard deviations, we don't actually know the standard deviation size, keep in mind it can fluctuate. There's 94% of the data, which is greater than the 75% that uh, Chebyshev uh, predicts, right? Um, and kind of ad infinitum, right? So, but we can actually calculate all of those values and see that even experientially, we can see that it, it works, right? Then we're going to talk some more about, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about standard units. All right, so one of the things that it makes it easier to compare things to other things is if we can move them into standard units. So the problem with this, right, is that it's hard to compare this data set to that data set in a sense, right? Because this one is in terms of weights and that's in terms of heights. So instead, maybe we could switch them to standard units so that we can uh, kind of compare different things, even if they're not exactly in the same scale. So just trying to decide if I want to demo this first or talk about it first. Um, so if we take the standard deviations above the average, right? So we say the value minus the average divided by the standard deviation, and it's gonna kind of push us into those standard units, okay? And so when the values are in standard units, then the average will be zero and the standard deviation will be one, okay? So now we know, like, so now we've moved all of our data so that it's all centered around zero and it's, and a standard deviation size is consistent. It's always one, okay? And so then we'll know that 96% of the values of whatever are between minus five and positive five. Does that make sense? So basically we're just doing a little bit of math to try to shift everything into the same neighborhood. If we call that doing with standard units, but then we have a bunch of rules we can kind of easily apply because now we have a very consistent set of data. Makes sense. We still know we still have all the distribution and everything else that we did before. It's just that it's kind of shifted it so that it all kind of looks more alike, which is easier to work with. So um yeah, let me go talk about the standard units more. All right. So to calculate the standard units, we take our value, we subtract the average, right? And then we um, divide it by the standard deviation. And so if we wanna do it to a whole thing, we can make a little function. Um, and we can see that our maternal ages, right, fluctuate between, I don't remember what it was, but let's just say for the sake of argument, it's 27 and 38. Um, but then we can shift it to standard units. And now everything is kind of wrapped around zero, um, and, but the distribution's the same. So we can, do, we can do the same kinds of things with it. We've just kind of shifted from this set of data down to something that's more simple. Paul, everybody make sense? Okay, um, so the idea here is that we, when we, here, let me look at this. 
So for example, if we want to do something that's related to the maternal pregnancy weight and the maternal height, these are like kind of wildly different histograms, right? Um, and so it's difficult to, to compare them in any way because they, like, they're just not even in the right kind of scale. So if we want to do something between them, what we can do is instead we can take this whole data set and essentially shift this whole diagram so that it's around zero, okay? And then I'm gonna save for that one and then we can compare the one to the other, except that this should really be a, with standard deviations, but the, it's, the idea is the same. It's basically we're shifting all of the data from its natural units and shifting them all to a standardized unit so that we can say, okay, I've got this data set and this data set, maternal height and maternal pregnancy weight, I got these two data sets, but now I can compare them to each other because I've put them in the same units. They're not in inches and pounds anymore. Does that make sense? All right, we'll move on from there and I'm sure we will be touching upon this again. Um, so what else did I wanna show here? So now, so I'm just trying to, okay, so now our average, right, is still negative seven, but with an E of negative 17, right? So it's really close to zero. Um, it's just not very obvious because it looks like a negative seven, but our standard deviation is one. So if we just rounded this, it would be zero, but their average now should be zero and one standard deviation is one. And then two standard deviations is two or negative two, whatever. <coughs> then hopefully, oops, already have it. And so just kind of another kind of example, right? It's like, so here's their actual age, right? And then here it is, <coughs> excuse me, shifted to the standard units, okay? So don't forget, right, that a higher number doesn't necessarily mean you'll get a higher number here because this is representing, this is representing its distance from the mean, not the actual value. Because when we're doing most of the trying to identify what's going on in that data set, we kind of don't really care what the actual age is. What we care about is how far away it is from normal. Does that make sense? So, yeah, so just keep in mind, right? They won't necessarily, let me see if there's a good example, but like, yeah, like 25 and 23 here, right? Is that this is a much bigger number than this. Um, but it's because it's just a difference. It's the distance from the center, not the difference from between each other. All right. And then I think I just have a calc. But let's talk about this histogram. I don't think I need the values, no. Um, I hate when it does that. All right, so this is our kind of original histogram. And then I think we have a follow-up with the standard units histogram. And so if you look at them, right, they should look exactly the same or very, very close except that the X and Y axis is now different, primarily the X axis. That makes sense? And if you look at them also visually, you can see that zero is gonna land like here, right? Because this is the kind of average age, right? It's not the median, but it's the average. All right. 
talk about this real quick and then we will revisit this more next time. So this is our maternal height distribution, right? Um, and it's pretty uniform, which is handy. But let me, so we're running out of time. Oh, we're not gonna get, you know. yeah, actually let's, let's not talk about that. Um, we'll talk about this bell curves next time. The example that I have, I don't think is gonna work well, um, but we can talk about this part a little bit. Just if Instagram is bell shaped, then the average is at the center, right? And so we end up with, um, you know, like a shape that looks like a bell, right? Uh, and the SD is the distance between the average and the points of inflection on either side. And so this is where kind of some of the drawing, I think gets like a little confusing, but like you can kind of see where the standard deviations are on a bell shaped curve, um, because you can kind of see where they cut off as they're going down. So that'll be come up more as we go forward. Um, but you can also do most of it with math and yeah, we can call it there. I think any questions?